Spinners of Yarns, Rural Galloway. Uh, I'm here with Big Bob Morris, Ace Hello. Face of uh, East London. How you doing, Bob? All right, mate. Not too bad. So, it's kind of like you're born in the East End, funny enough. What? Yeah, no, not really. It's East London. So East London, okay. And once you go beyond, as I've been told by many, many mates, I'm actually an Essex boy. Yeah. Because past the River Roading, yeah. which is like my land, yeah. it, it was Essex up until 1965, I think. So it was uh, County West Ham, County Borough Council or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, Forest Gate was sort of where people moved from the East End, but all the, all the families from the East End and most of my family come, like three brothers, three sisters, all brought up around Stratford. Yeah. And then uh, I was Forest Gate, just up the road, really. But you kind of like, because music's probably been, music and fashion have been the, the two things for your your adult life. When did you first become aware yeah, of, uh, of music? I, 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 well, that's the thing, it's like, uh, it's very uh, like I'm surprised how early it is, but I, I, I sort of I really remember like this question I've been asking for 20 years to people is what's the first record you bought with your, your own money, and I think I went into famous record shop Paul's at Whitechapel down my end waste it's called but it's Whitechapel, and I went down there. And I think I was going to buy Shawadi Wadi, which were probably going to be number one or yeah. were number one, and they didn't have it. So, but you could buy. I think singles were t- twenty-five or thirty pence, and decimalisation had just come in. And I bought Snoopy versus the Red, Red Baron and Mouldy Old Doe uh-huh. by Lieutenant Pigeon. And like, I've still got them actual them two records I've kept them for all the records I've lost I've kept them surprisingly <laughs> never played them out I don't think but it's like 1973 yeah or 1972 sorry 1972 I was eight yeah like on my birthday's in December yeah and I was eight and I was buying my own records you know yeah. what I mean it's yeah, mad, yeah. It's yeah, mad yeah. to think yeah. how like you know my mum would let me go in and buy like to the shop and she was at a market store whatever and uh it, it was there, you know, and then, you know, Sweet, Slade, Mud, you know, all through all those bands and all that. And yeah. then your brother's, your mate's brother playing us to Rolling Stones and Beatles and all that. But it really, really young. Yeah. We all was. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? We yeah, all yeah. sort of, I think that, that, I think our generation with that sort of first generation to experience music that early. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. like, because when you go back, you look at people who were into rock and roll and skiffle, they was like 14, 15. Yeah. You know, in the sort of 50s and early 60s, and the same with the mods, same sort of age. And then we were all like 8, 9, 10. Everyone had a, had, was talking about music. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I, I was a bit, you know, I was a bit full, sort of anal about it because I'm just obsessed over the records and Chin and Chapman. I met, met, um, Mike Chapman, like uh, uh, one of my geese dudes, last year or a year before last. Yeah. And I went, it's your fault. And he went, what? What? What, what do you mean? I said, oh, like chin chap. I said, sweet. I said that was that was you that introduced me, and I, I remember reading your name everywhere, yeah. and wondering who you were, yeah, yeah. and why weren't you in the band? <laughs> but they couldn't write for shit, could they? <laughs> so yeah, it's like uh, yeah, music's always been a massive part of my life and, and I think I think not, not sure whether it just coming from the East End because the more you talk about people like we were talking about earlier it, you, you, you see how much um, you, you see how much our lives our working class lives sort of mirror each other yeah. and wherever you are in the country you've got like similarities with experience but I think yeah and fashion I think it just goes along with that and you know, I just you know, it was like, remember, you know, not get, you know, not going, not wanting to go out because I didn't have a jacket to wear, you know, for a party. When I was a, you know, probably pre-teen, probably 12, 11 or twelve. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you know, that, you know, it was that. Oh, I can't go because I wore this jacket last time, and you know, but luckily, I mean, luckily, my nan was in the rag trade. So like you know, we 
you know, the next week when there was another party, yeah. she went and got me a jacket. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And it was like, you know, big wide lapel. I remember it was like Prince of Wales check, big white. It was a suit, I think. And uh, it was we were all grown up, you know, wearing big wide lapel jack suits, and then you know the sort of soul boy thing with the pegs and granddad shirts and all that, and then uh, punk rock cut. Oh God. Yeah. Were, you, were you a punk or you, you no, liked the music didn't you no I liked music yeah but it, it's like I've just been doing that sort of 20 albums thing yeah. on Facebook that influenced you and you know and I put up I think I put up rumours um, Power in the Darkness out, 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 yeah out of the, out of the blue out, um, ELO yeah. you know what I mean like yeah yeah they were massive albums yeah, yeah, yeah. to me. You know, yeah. really, really, you know, I could still sing yeah. all the old uh, double album, the LO, all backwards, forwards, and, you know, certainly forwards, and about back, backwards, but rumours as well. Yeah. And, um, it, it, and and then it was that sort of time, 77, 78, and, and on Live and Dangerous, Finn Lizzie. Yeah. Massive album. Like, yeah, really, yeah. you know, ne- never been to a live gig. Yeah. But that album, I think, just sounds like a live gig. Yeah. And like we, you know, another conversation because of you know we conversation in the pub last week, uh, and it's just like it's got to be the best live album ever. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You know, there's you know James Brown at the Apollo, but that really weren't our generation, obviously. No. Or Lou Rose, Lou Rules at the Cabana or whatever. Nothing compares to that live and dangerous. And and when you listen to it in modern day, there's a lot of punk involved in it. You know yeah. what I mean? It's fucking 100 mile an hour yeah really is you know yeah, what I mean yeah. so that and then you know and obviously then punk come along and it was just singles you know really yeah. you know really was heavily you know for every you know probably buy 10 singles for every album yeah you know what I mean and, 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 and it's you look at it and you think they're probably right you know what I mean I remember getting the I suppose it was I suppose it was December 78 getting the Roxy live at the Roxy album it was fucking rotten it was terrible this punk rock I don't want to be involved yeah, yeah. you know what I mean it was a terrible album like you know what I mean but it was a cashing album wasn't it yeah well I didn't, you, know. you don't know that yeah, yeah. my brother had bought it for me my middle brother bought it for me like because he knew I liked punk and yeah. it was just like it was terrible yeah, you yeah. know what I mean and it's like an, in the city couldn't get that didn't get that at all Right, and then uh, I was, at, you know, I was having a row with yes, well, not having a row, having a disagreement with someone. Uh, oh no, today actually with me mate about um, another music. In, I put up Love Bites as one of them albums. Yeah. And I said, but different music, uh, another music in a different kitchen was a grown-up record. And we didn't, I didn't understand. Uh, Thirteen yeah, yeah. or fourteen, yeah, I yeah. didn't get it. I yeah, thought yeah. it was shit yeah. as well, and I took it back and I swapped it for this year's model I think yeah you know what I mean and then the Blood Bites I kept I've still got that you yeah. know what I mean it's a brilliant pop album you know what I mean yeah yeah but it, it, it's how your music how your ear how your ear changes how you listen to music just makes all the difference and I think that's the thing and the same with like Jam's first album it was just an R&B album you know that's a that's a pub pub rock covers band yeah but young you yeah. know 17 yeah, yeah. 16 17 and like listening to that and they just go in oh no, i don't like oh, i love that single though like, you know what i mean all around the world brilliant yeah. single this is a yeah, brilliant yeah. single yeah. in the cities are brilliant they're all brilliant singles yeah. so with the buzzcock yeah. every single was amazing you know what i mean and I, I was saying about john pill earlier and it was like i remember under the covers and he played spiral sketch both sides you know the whole EP, and yeah, I thought yeah. that was amazing. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I had to go to small wonder in Walthamstow to get it, Ippy P, and he was love. And that was the first record I remember buying from him. Yeah. And he was a lovely bloke, you know, and yeah, yeah. a mine of information, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And I'm sort of by sort of seventy eight. I turned started wearing a parker and all that turn mod but whatever virtual mod I was you know what I mean and anything came in he'd know oh you're like this you know yeah. you're like that you're like you know long tall shorty and you know all that certainly through that period he was made, he made man for the yeah. sort of mod records that because they weren't getting paid on radio yeah you know yeah, what I mean yeah. And, yeah. and that's it was just like I mean, it, it was just that and then starting to go to the gigs and 
a bit in the same I think it was the same month or a month or two apart so he status quo at Wembley and uh, Tom Robinson band at Gantu Odeon and the week after in during the blockheads and I think the week after the Banshees but I can't be can't swear to that one yeah, yeah. but you know we like the reason I had status quo tickets because we're all status quo fans in 78 like 77 yeah, yeah. and yeah, you buy a ticket six months yeah. in advance yeah, yeah. by the yeah. time we had four tickets I ended up going to Wembley Arena on my own in a parker with three tickets in my pocket <laughs> and then we well, buy these tickets I didn't know what to do like, was, was there a big West Ham uh, mod oh scene? that's yeah that, the, there, wasn't, there wouldn't be a mod scene without West Ham there would definitely I mean, there were talking to people, year, you know, over years like Chad in South End, who, like uh, Gary Gary Wood, they were influenced by Quadrophenia, probably four or five years older than us, yes. and they were, they were inf- you know, got into it from that. But I think the scene that there, there, there was something missing. I mean, we, me and my mates, certainly didn't want to be skinheads because they were all NF. That was just you know we lived in Forest Gate all our after our mates were West Indian and Asian you know what I mean and Irish as well you know that was the that was the mixture yeah and uh, it was just like that was you, you that was the sort of choice and, you, and then the, the thing that come through from like Grant and Harrison and all that lot in West uh, West Ham like yeah. the top boys they were dressing in this like you know like the jam sort of thing and they were dressing in that certain way yeah. that, oh yeah, that's what I put it. I remember asking one of my mates, who's a bit older, I said, What's this? what are they wearing? I said, oh, they're mods. I went, oh, I like that. I said, oh, I'll take you up Mint and Dave's shop in Romford and get the gear. Yeah, yeah. So I got me, I think, uh, yeah, I got me money. Oh, I know. Me and Glenn Pierman, me and me mate, was uh, bunk- not bunking off school then, but during the six weeks holidays, we were he got a job washing up for an agency in the city yeah and so we had to make out we was 18 or make out we was 16 and i think we was 14 and and like make out we was 16 and go and do washing up and we was getting 30 quid a week fucking brilliant like you know what i mean like early start and finished early so you could still go out and play or go fishing whatever and uh we were just like yeah so we had money and I went up there and I bought a uh, Parker Stay Press, two pairs of Levi Stay Press and a Parker. I think it was a tenner, a whole lot. Like two and a half quid for the trousers, yeah. Stay Press, a fiver for the uh, Parkers. About a month later, I took two of my other mates, I took two of my mates up there and the Parkers were a tenner. Right. Like, it was like, th- but this is 78, this yeah, is before yeah. Quadrophenia and anything. And it was just like, that's how quickly it took off. It was a matter of weeks from like seeing like who would, would become the Glory Boys, yeah. At like you know, back of the South Bank, to like seeing how they were dressing, seeing it weren't skinny, yeah, and weren't NF and weren't all that, and didn't come with all that. No one was punk. I still say this to this day. They were like mates West Ham, like they had Spike, yeah, yeah, but that was about it. That was yeah. like there weren't like no geezers with walking around with safety pins yeah. up to park. Yeah, yeah. So I think that was the thing that mod sat in that way. It just came along at the right time that people were looking for something to identify with. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and you know, by that, by the season, like 80, 70, 78, 79 season, you'd look in the South Bank, it was all parkers. And, yeah. MA ones. I mean, it really yeah, yeah. was yeah. like the whole mob yeah. and going to away games, going to Tottenham away or Chelsea away. Yeah, yeah. It was just mobs of green jackets, Parkers and, yeah. and, and MA ones. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. That was it. And it was you know, crops and college boys. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like everyone looked really alike. You know what I mean? So that that was the first first big culture you, I see over there. Obviously, yeah. there was the skinhead thing before that. But it, yeah, and but that's the thing with, and then music come along with it. Yeah. So that was, you know, we were going to see punk bands. You know, you might go and see two bands a week. I go and see a punk band, and I might go and see a mod band. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had the choice. Yeah. You know, you, you could just, go out every night of yeah, the week, couldn't go, you? Be yeah. Able to you see literally a good could band. go. Yeah. Yeah. Any any school night. You know what I mean? We ended up like we got because the bridge house got a bit when because it, it was busy. 
it got a bit started turning us away because we were underage right. we were obviously underage yeah, yeah. you know what I mean we were spotty 14 year old and like but you, you would have been big at that point yeah I was not, tall not big no but, but yeah know. no I was but that's why I was big bob so yeah. I, I was big yeah but uh, it was still like no you can't come but it was because I spoke to Glenn I spoke to the geezer done the door Glenn and he went no no we just couldn't let any more in it was mental yeah. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. So like you'd get you turn and it was it was Canyon Town and Forest Gate was quite slick because it was like a bus and it's a bit dangerous territory, Canyon Town because it was you know Stratford and Canyon Town were always at war with each other and it was where you from and Bonehead's yeah. you know what I mean all the way there, so you go through Plasto up up for Barking Road and in the Canyon Town it's Bonehead territory and coming back, but um. But we discovered the um, marquee, so I've been to the marquee a few times, and then once I went with two mates who were both a year older than me. Like you say, Barney was little, and Boy Racer was sort of tall but skinny, looked younger than me. <coughs> and the bounce, bounce, bouncer let us in, uh, let me in, didn't let them to in. And he pulled me at one side and he said, uh, "Here, mate," he said, uh, "I know you're all underage," he said, "but I didn't let your mates in because they're so pissed." I went, oh, all right, cheers, mate. And he went, but what you want to do? He goes, go over there, uh, give him 50p and you get membership. And he goes, and you've got, like, get him, yeah, yeah. get in all the time. So, and they, they'd done it, you could, like, uh, send off for membership. I've got two yeah, forms, yeah. Yeah. and I've done mine there and then, and I've yeah. got two, lied about my age, we'd be used to that. Yeah. And uh, got two forms, and Barney and Boy Race had done it, just went to the marquee like, every, like even when there weren't anything we knew on we'd just go up there yeah just because it was 20 pence to get in do you know what i mean yeah. and, and that ended up with uh, a few of us went up there for um when they were doing like john's boy so this would have been 79 they'd done a like secret gig under the name john's boys and uh my mate then went at school he or I think it was someone else, uh, Mutley. Mutley went, who was who had left school, but he was a year above us. And he went, he went, oh, he went, oh, the jam are doing a secret gig at the marquee under this name, and he said this name, and it made sense yeah. for some reason. Yeah. So we've gone up there, bunked off school, lunchtime, gone up there, met Mutley, met a few others, got on the got on the train, gone up there, got to the marquee big sign on the door same way it was and we're going oh, couldn't see anyone like couldn't see no queues of people i mean it's the fucking jam yeah, there yeah. should have been a queue yeah. by lunch time like yeah. say one o'clock whatever time it was there would have been a queue around their block like there was yeah, yeah. a couple of months before anyway like da, da, da. and then we've seen a few like if you walk around the, up the alleyway up the side where the car park was there was the uh the backstage bit like it loaded Seen a couple of Greek geezers unloading gear. Oh, mate, what's the band playing? And the Irish fella went like, oh, there's the, the, the rock band. I went, oh, fuck it now. Like, Matley, slagging Matley off. And then we've all got there, we've got our, like, ten bobs, whatever we have for beer, and uh, went down the ship. So we sat in the ship. Yeah. And uh, Jerry Floyd, the DJ, was in there. Yeah. And uh, he was a funny bloke. He was always nice. But um, he... He's, oh, you lads. He said, uh, we've got a band tonight. He paid no, ain't, uh, sold no tickets. And we're going, oh, right, what? He went, oh, and he bought us all a light, light, light and lager. He bought us all a light, light and lager. And he went, look, if I give you a fiver, or, or a ten, I think it was a tenner between us, like a couple of quid each. Yeah. If I give you a tenner, would you give some tickets out? Go around the Carnaby Street, the West End, and give some tickets out to call people yeah yeah and we went, yeah yeah all right yeah we'll do that so give us a big wedge of tickets and we've gone up to carnaby street and like going up to sort of rocky types and yeah, punks yeah. and yeah, yeah. oh we've got to come and see this band they're brilliant they're amazing they didn't know who it was i did know who it was because yeah. i'd seen the name but yeah, no yeah. one knew who yeah, that yeah. fucking yeah. was then yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> and it's like uh obviously it's sad in this in hindsight i know the story yeah, now because yeah. i've read about it but um, so we've gone to the here we go. It, we've gone to 
he would give all these tickets out and he said what I'll do is he'd give us a tenner like a couple of quid each and then he goes I'll give you a case of beer and what you used to get these cans of I think they were Heineken like half cans yeah like in, in the marquee club like these little half cans and uh, he gave us a case of them so we're in there's like eight or nine little urch, urchin mods and there was 81 people in the marquee 81 people who were they watching the jab no who you too <laughs> it was their first night of their right. residency well, yeah, at yeah. the marquee yeah and it was 1980 i think yeah. uh, 79 i think it was 79 79 or 8 no it was 79 must have been john's boys they was playing their first night and i read me mate had happened to have the book on his shelf like the thing i said i've got to look this gig up you know years yeah, yeah. later and it was like the story of that first night there was yeah, 81 yeah. people in there <laughs> and like at least Thanks nine of them yeah, yeah, at right. least nine of them were mods yeah, and the yeah. rest of them were like we brought them anyway we'll give them free tickets like no one bought a ticket he's, yeah, yeah. He's, I think they'd probably sold like ten tickets or something yeah, and yeah. then the next week it was busy and then busier and busier yeah, and then yeah. it was round the block yeah but uh, yeah it was their first ever show in, in like well not first ever, I don't, don't think it was their first it weren't their first London show because they played the uh, Bridge House they played well. Bridge House didn't they yeah so when did when did you did you mix mingle with mods from south of the river, north London, west London? Well, we, I don't think we had much. No, not really. There was a lot of like, yeah, it was it was it was football like. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean. So yeah. it's like East London. If you was at a cut gig, like Marquee, wherever you was, I mean, it kicked off quite a few places. Westway it went off Mental. Uh, what was the club under the Westway? I think it was going Acklam to see Hall. yeah Acklam Hall we went to see Squire or something and the, the the West London mods were with the skinhead that was a famous one that one wasn't yeah. it well there was a famous the yeah. uh, rejects had it off there didn't they proper um, yeah so like Secret Fair like yeah. for the Glory Boys yeah, so they, that, yeah, was, no that was a big one yeah. but uh, yeah we went there and they were like, we had it with them so there was, that started a feud with sort of Acton and Shepherds Bush mods uh, there was always a few with South London because as far as we were concerned they were all fucking Millwall do you know what I mean yeah, so yeah. there would always be yeah. you know in that first couple of years there would always be a bit of friction but then once once it all calmed down once like Codrophenia had been and gone and everyone had turned you know everyone every, literally everyone had turned casual it was like we the, the mud clubs we were doing by that time we were doing our own nights yeah it was like, don't give a fuck. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? We're all mods. That was it. Yeah. You know, we was that was our identity, and yeah. there weren't enough of it to go around yeah. to 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 row with yeah. each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. You'd still get oh, this one's ch- chatted that one bird up, and we yeah. had to go to a pub in South London or yeah. Woolwich or somewhere. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But it was just normal stuff. But before then, it was yeah, there was friction at most of the gigs. You know, especially like you know the sort of mosh our version of mosh pit was folks going like that <laughs> <laughs> so how did the, the whole casual thing come about then in 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 west ham upton park oh definitely yeah i mean that was so that sort of at that time yeah there was like um they, i know i swear they were called casuals but the casuals were geezers sitting around listening to 12 inch dub smoking gear yeah like no clubs no yeah. nothing it was just that it was yeah. just like they'd like you'd see them at clubs and they have Italian slip-ons Farrah's Wexman's and the Kabichi yeah. chain yeah. definitely you know Curly Air or whatever, you know Perm or whatever yeah. just hanging about with West Indian lads but we, it was all I mean that's, you couldn't help it really if you come yeah. from Stratford Forest Gate Manor Park Hilton that was our yeah you know we were all very mixed mixed crowd yeah so that's where it's that was the 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 thing at the time and as soon as sort of i mean really like one of the faces was kieran mcmahon like you know and uh he was like sort of top boy and ex-boxer bridge house you know blah 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 i remember seeing him and he went look me up and down and it was only like (laughs) probably uh, early 79 he went oh he's still a fucking mud 
and I went oh I was gutted like because he was a bit older and he knew me like wee and then the other thing he's still a fucking mod and he was a you know and he was a casual and he had a like you know belcher on and yeah, yeah. you know what I mean and and that was like that was that early thing of casual and it so it was like those that blew out the mod thing stepped straight into this casual thing with the Kabiches and the Farrahs and all that and then really quickly they were wearing Pringles and Lyle and Scott no yeah. really quickly yeah, yeah. you know that chat and that was the thing I used to I used to say this at the time how that the, the casual scene was more mod than the mod scene because right, yeah, yeah. they were listening to like import yeah. house music so imported soul records yeah. they were changing fashions like that you know yeah. what I mean it's like yeah, yeah. that you know I, I see me mates like one of the under fives see him on the train and he had um, Sergio on, covered in plaster. Yeah, yeah. And I went, all right, so how are you doing? He went, yeah, all right, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And I went, uh, is that one of them Sergio Chichinis? And he went, yeah. And I went, ain't they 70 quid? And that was just the tracksuit yeah, yeah, top, yeah, yeah, not yeah, the bottoms. Yeah. And I went, ain't they 70 quid? And he went, yeah, all the fucking Northerners are wearing them now. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah, yeah. that, like, yeah. you know, it, it was like, bang, bang, bang. That was all within a year or so. It went from, the beaches to Pringles yeah. to Sergio like in certainly by 1980 yeah. early 80 but yeah. you know I reckon it was 78, 79 yeah. in that year that fashion went jun, 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 and they were just quick they were like you know oh you're like you know you're listening to this you're wearing that you're wearing night you know you're wearing it was more Adidas from London's point of view more than Nike but then again, you could go, you, you could spot Arsenal, Arsenal, because they'd have a Nike on. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you could spot Chelsea, because they'd still be wearing donkey jackets, not now boots, and mugs. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It was that, it, it was that quick, you know yeah. what I mean? And, yeah, it, yeah. It, and it's like, uh, <laughs> They, it, it, that fashion was just it was it was great to watch it yeah, yeah, but yeah. you know it was almost like you know I was cool for about 20 minutes do you know what I mean it yeah, was yeah. like there was, a, there, was a, there was a point in 1978 between 78 certainly between 78 and summer summer of 78 7 to 79 there was a point there I was cool because yeah. the big boys I was wearing what the big boys were wearing and one of the big boys also said oh, I, like, I painted in up for, for me uh art exam and painted the jam in black and white on the back of my parka yeah, yeah. in a tur in a circle thing and it was half black and art anyway it was two like sort of two tone almost two tony thing but uh that was it and i was a bit new you know and i knew i had the special record for everyone else and all that you know what i mean so it was yeah there was a point i was cool but within a year it was like just a mug oh you're still a mod you know yeah, it yeah. went back to that and it's yeah. i was going football with all my mates in all their fucking gear and I was like oh, 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 oh jean jacket I'll get away with a jean jacket you know, you know what I mean you know, yeah, I, you know if it's like yeah, yeah. We, yeah, it's I mean we moved on from the parkers very quickly you know what I mean yeah. we, we you know it was great because we could still pick we could still walk, walk into shops in East London yeah. and just pick stuff like new old stock off the shelf yeah, yeah. literally you know, you know what I mean there was a quite a few old Jewish tailors and yeah. old Jewish outfitters and clothes shops like Leeches in Canning Town where you could literally walk in and everything was still there yeah. in the 60s nothing had changed yeah. they hadn't restocked they were just massive outlets and they just had all the gear yeah. and the army and navy is all down all, all down the road all down Romford Road from Whitechapel right the way down they always had old stock Levi's 501 you know they had all the gear because it never you know if it didn't sell in the 60s yeah. it was only 15 years later yeah. like from 64 so yeah. you know they, they were still getting that gear in 67, 68 you yeah, could yeah. still buy, go and buy hipsters especially skinny mates you know what I mean you could still buy hipsters and all that and one one time someone's mum walked she was like a modernist and she she come home and she said to her son she went oh they've got um original 501 white 501 denim jean jackets but it weren't denim it was actually white it was white denim but it was dyed denim 
It was actually white cotton, yeah, yeah. jean jackets from Levi's, really thick and every. In um, they'd suddenly put them in the winter. I think that was four and a half quid or something. In uh, the Army and Navy at Manor Park. Fucking amazing. So he's told me he's gone and got one. He's told me I've told my like, like da, 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 da. the bridge house the next Monday. Yeah. I counted forty two. <laughs> I stood on the stage. Yeah. Like and I went. Hold on, uh, and I went, and I counted how many white jean jackets out of the crowd of like 150 people going, seeing this, you know, Purple Arts or whatever it was, there was 42 blokes in white denim jean jackets. Basically, we bought the whole lot, all our little East London lot, yeah, yeah. bought every single one, like, and they wore, like, forever, like, you know what I mean? But they were just, yeah, we, we were lucky we could buy all that gear just off the cuff, you know what I mean? I mean, West Ham was synonymous with the uh, green flight jacket. Yeah, yeah, and that sort of come out the mod thing. That was a, like, you know, that was the replacement for the Parker. Yeah. One, they were expensive. Yeah. Do you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? They were the reverse. Yeah. Yeah. They were, they were yeah. reversible. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Orange. Some people wore them with orange, yeah, yeah. but they was definitely, you know, and that sort of Lonsdale. You know, that with a Lonsdale shirt, West Claret and Blue Lonsdale shirt underneath. That yeah. was your kit, you yeah. know what I mean? Pair yeah, yeah. of BMs yeah. and 501s, yeah. you know what I mean? Or Wranglers, whatever. Yeah. And that that was the look, but yeah. you could see the air changing. Yeah. So you could see people's air changing and that didn't fit. Yeah. If you look at them, you look at old pictures of that, that, that period, because you only see photos really, no document, like video documentary. Yeah. But of West Ham you can see that looks change like people are still wearing that like flight jacket but their hair's got a bit longer yeah, yeah. or it's got a bit longer at the back yeah, and all, yeah. you know what I mean yeah. and that was like all, all in that really short period yeah. like seven, 78 to say summer 78 to summer 80 yeah. well not even that summer 78 to Christmas 79 it, yeah. it, it's like it went bang 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 and it suddenly it become a thing yeah. and it was like mod was that was the end of mod do you know what I mean I literally thought I was the last mod in fucking East London but there was still quite a, a mod scene wasn't there throughout the 80s yeah yeah so that was I think the thing was we got we got tired of the bands very quickly, right? Yeah, yeah. But we were still going to see bands. I yeah. mean, I'll, I'll speak to certain band members, and they go, "Oh, you killed our band." No, we didn't. It was just like we were still going to see bands, it just weren't your band. Yeah, yeah. You know, we'd rather go and see the Q-Tips yeah. than we would go and see fucking Kilometers or Squire. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, fucking Squire was shit anyway. But you know, what I mean, even the Calls and the Purple Arts, they were, they were sort of our mates. Yeah. You know what I mean? But certainly, like, you know, I'd rather sit down and see the Q-Tips in 1980 than I would see Secret Affair in 1980. But a lot of, a lot of things are different to now. A lot of things, everything happens so fast. Yeah. Music changed, and it's kind of, for me, as a, as a kid growing up, all I wanted to do was listen to new music. So yeah. I would imagine it would have been the same for you. Exactly. You know, you know and, and you've got to remember, we, we had the added addition of we'd gone from like punks in parkers yeah because we we didn't have a mods book we didn't yeah. have the you know what i mean yeah, we didn't yeah. have none of that we didn't know we were basically all listening to punk and then we were mods so we were listening to slightly out different punk but still you know called purple arts both punk bands you know what yeah. I mean? yeah yeah but the addition was we were discovering 60s music yeah so we all would have certainly me. I had like you know Spence, uh, Spencer Davis and records, singles and small faces that people would just give family. Just give you know you just yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh he likes records. Yeah, I have some records. You know what yeah. I mean? It's yeah. like that sort of thing of and you could still go. You know the main thing I would buy in second hand shops was not clothes. Yeah singles Record. you know and it was just like if the label looked 60s I'd buy it for 10p yeah yeah you know what I mean it was like 10p 5p 10p yeah do you know what I mean and it's like you know I picked a, you know one of the most influenced albums uh, influential albums for me was the Sue story which didn't really buy it at many albums yeah but it looked very mod because yeah. it had a black yeah. geezer on the front and a bloke in a shirt and tie yeah and that album was just like wow what the and I'm like taking it to parties yeah oh let me put on like Ike and Tina Turner and people go fucking Tina Turner and it was like I can't believe what you say because I see what you do and they, all they wanted was my generation yeah yeah so already our little group was moving 
into a different John, yeah. like a different sound. Yeah, yeah. Like you know that, uh, you know, and then like we stumbled across the six T's. Like um, me and my mate was going we're, we're after the mods, mods book come out in '79, and we trawled through that and looked for places to go. If there was yeah, nothing yeah. on, he had a mini. He was a year older, so he was old enough to drive, and he could use his mum's mini. So we drove up to um, West Hampstead, yeah. where Clute's Cleet was, yeah, yeah. Railway Hotel. Yeah. Gone up there, gone in, and, the, uh, and I still can't remember if it's upstairs or downstairs. But the Irish got up a Largaridge, and like the uh, Irish governor, he went, You're a lot of you're a lot of upstairs. And I went, what? I walked upstairs, and it was 50p or 20 I think it was 20p yeah. something to get in yeah. and it was 16 like Randy and Aidy yeah, yeah. and it was like oh this fucking music's brilliant didn't yeah. have a clue what it was yeah. like it was a geezer like you know a couple of geezers back flipping his tiny little room yeah. you know what I mean it was like what the fuck's this all about you know what I mean yeah. but that was it and then we were down but I didn't have it I don't think they had any flyers there but a couple of weeks later, he was in Ken Kensington Market, and we might went, yeah, Bob, is that that place you went? And it was like six T's yeah. thing, but it was now in Oxford Street or Charing Cross, it's Tottenham Court Road. It was a pub next to Dominion. We went, oh, we'll go there, and that was a mob of us yeah. turned up. Like we all met in Strat, like met, met in the chats of all the foresters, might be the foresters, and and we went in the West End from there. Like you know what I mean? And yeah. that was the start of that journey yeah. which certainly wasn't Northern Soul then it, no. was, it was R&B you know yeah. I mean, like far, you know, not even fast it was really good yeah. R&B stuff do you know what I mean but that, if, that was a that was a lifeline for, for Northern Soul wasn't it the, the, the mod scene coming oh through oh god and, yeah know. AD still ain't credited me for saving his <laughs> paying for his mortgage and buying him houses all of them but uh, yeah I mean we yeah we I mean we were I mean by the time it got it was about three or four events later that they got to the hundred club and stayed in the hundred club, yeah. and then the all nighter started. Yeah. Yeah. The time you got to the first all nighter, it was all fucking mobs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it weren't northern, you know, it weren't northern. It was, but by that time, what, what, really, my interpretation. Y- yeah, it, it, yeah. I mean, it's like Etta James and something's got an older, you know, all that sort of stuff you'd say now in the age of Spotify were standards yeah. that you could certainly couldn't hear them records anywhere else yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean you couldn't yeah. hear them certainly couldn't hear them on the radio yeah. and they were hard to buy yeah you know what I mean but we were still and that so coming back to that where we were in East London you could still go into sweet shops yeah. and they'd have a rack of singles so then you'd start going through and looking for certain labels and certain yeah. artists and yeah. all the British so the British issue you know the majority of our our record collections in the first three or four years of mod were, were British labels yeah. you know they were all stateside you know London American you know so all of that stuff I mean but even so then was quite hard because it was collectible yeah. on the collectible market yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean nothing to do with soul or any of that yeah. uh, but all them records you could you know, you you would pick stuff up you'd never heard. Yeah. You know, and in amongst that was like you know, Spencer Davis, Herbie Coins and Night Timers, all them great British bands as well. You know, yeah. Cyril Davis, all that stuff. You could just pick it up ev- yeah. everywhere you went. Yeah. You know, record, and then they started having record fairs. And we found out what record fairs were. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it was great. You know, and, and that that was so that sort of fed into the thing that we weren't really listening to them sort of bands anymore we've yeah. grown out of punk yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and they yeah. were still playing punk and they yeah. were in fact you think about it you know 1980 they've been playing them same songs for two years yeah you know how many times do you want to hear type reaction exactly yeah. how many times do you want to hear now it's gone like now it's gone now it's gone here's a brilliant record but it's like we we were moving quickly yeah 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 even within the mod scene yeah. we were we were because i mean we we were East London, so we was a mob. We wouldn't go anywhere on our own. Like, we, it was always we'd meet in a pub and then go out, yeah. whether it was a gig or anything. And but also fashion-wise, we were fucking miles in front of them. Do you know what I mean? Not wearing parkers, yeah. wearing, you know, tailored trousers, step bottoms, split yeah, bottoms. Yeah. You know what I mean? Covered buttons, all overcoat. I mean, over, we were the kings of overcoats. 
because everywhere you you know wherever you lived in East London, there was an old tailor's or there yeah. was an old uh, like uh, um, like an old clothes shop yeah. that you could just walk in and take stuff off the rail. How much did I miss that? Two pound because yeah. they were two pound in 1966 yeah. like you know what I mean we still had like tags on them and shirts I mean you know we were, we were you know we were buying box shirts yeah there was a place in um, Grants in Limehouse and uh, he, he just had stacks and stacks of shirts like I would, you know pull them down don't know what was in there yeah blew the literally blowing dust off yeah and like uh, what's that oh button down brilliant oh like oh tab collar oh brilliant like you know looking at these different you know just discovery yeah, and yeah. it was like discovery it was no different from discovering a great record yeah yeah discovering a great brand new shirt yeah or a brand, brand new coat yeah or you know or a tailor's that had just shut down and just opened up again i mean one of them was me mates uh, i was every i was working on building sites so you'd be somewhere different every week yeah and my lunch times was like they're all going where are you going pub no, no, I'm going out looking. And I just go out looking for old shops. Yeah. Whether it's in the city, West London, wherever I was working, I'd find old shops, you know, you know what I mean? Found, found one over in uh, near Port Bella, another one like um, Silk Street up in the city. You know, there was just shops. Yeah. There yeah, you yeah. could go in and they had old, excuse me, mister, have you got any old stock? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Brush yeah. your that cement dust off, whatever. And it was just like that. And then <laughs> my mates come around and... Uh, Russell Ware, he said, lovely chair, oh, always had a lovely chair. He's come around, he goes, I found one, I found one. I went, what? He goes, I found a clothes shop. I went, fucking brilliant. And it was uh, down, um, just past Mile End, just past Mile End Station on the right hand side. And it was, um, he drove past it, right. and he drove past it a lot, because it still had the old signage out. Yeah. But all of a sudden, the shutters were up. And he said he went in, he stopped his scooter and he yeah, parked yeah. it. Because you'd always park your scooter around the corner so he didn't look like a mod. Yeah. I mean, it's a weird thing, but they, you know, they weren't interested. They want money. They're not interested in a load of fucking spotty Herberts. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so he's gone in and uh, they were just, there was an old couple in there and they were just sort of sweeping up. And she, and she the woman said to him, oh, we'll be back Monday. Uh, we'll be open Monday. He went, oh, all right, like blah blah blah. So I flew down there Monday, and because uh, he said what's in the window is all like Wrangler, yeah, Ipsters, and yeah. Le- in one window, yeah. and, and Wrangler and Levi, Ipsters and overcoats in the other window, yeah, yeah. and it was like exactly. So what they'd done, I spoke, we spoke to them like the following week, and they'd they'd um, they'd shut up shop in '68, and moved to Spain, right, and they'd come back to sell the shop yeah yeah because like so you know I mean? it's not 1980 <laughs> yeah, about 1980 yeah, so yeah. they still and it was nothing had changed yeah yeah everything was wow. in there I mean we had the man because it was all like the 60s it was all like skinny <laughs> everyone fitted every everything yeah, yeah. I mean I bought as much I'd done a week's wages in there yeah yeah and I was buying golf these golf jackets in, in like boxes like thin boxes but they were boxes like that, and there was brown, blue, beige, red, and they were like Harrington, but with no elastic on the sleeves or on the cuffs. Uh, and the cuffs were sort of like that, and they were for golf. They were literally golf jackets with no lining. Yeah. So you could wear a jumper underneath, but they had the button, button up like that. And I just bought. I went, oh, how much are they? And went, oh, it was thirty bob each for them. Like you know what I mean, one pound fifty. So I was buying them and selling them for a tenner because yeah. I knew they'd fly out. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Got a big, lovely tweed overcoat. I mean, it was just, we had two weeks of absolute freedom of going yeah. in there every Thursday because we were all on building site. And Mark was, Mark worked in the city, so he had like Fridays, but all, all the like sort of East London sort of core group, about five of us, we were yeah. all going up there and just giving them all the money we could because yeah. everything in there was just cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it fit it, that was it, you know what I mean? It was just fucking cool. Got a load of cu- box of cufflinks I got out there for a pound. I said, Oh, you got any old cufflinks? I need like and they'd, they'd just they'd just go out the back and pull something out and it, it was a box of cufflinks like that. Yeah, yeah. In like uh like cardboard but all separated and it was just like pairs of cufflinks. Yeah. Like that. You know, you open them up, it's like a ring box. And there was a cuff a pair of cufflinks. It was mental. Yeah. The amount of stuff we could make millions. 
be really nails this time next year. So two weeks later, gone there, nothing. <laughs> What's going on? Sharon? Sharon, I remember the missus's name, Sharon. Can't remember the old boy's name. I went, oh, what's happened, Sharon? And we're closing up now, we've got, we've got a buyer, and uh, some lovely boys from Portobello Road come down, and uh, they bought everything, everything. Go for St. George. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I asked Eddie years later, and it's still, yeah, yeah. I'd asked Barry, and he didn't have a clue, but when I asked Eddie years, years like, about 10 years ago, actually, I went, I've got to ask you this. And he said, oh, yeah, he goes, uh, it was his, the other, the other partner, um, Marco. Marco. Might have been Marco. Yeah, it must have been Marco. Or yeah. one of them. The three of them. Was Jewish. Or his family was Jewish on his mother's side or his wife's side or whatever. And their family had all the army and navies from there all the way down to, to South End. Every, that family, like the cousins, uncles, yeah, cousins, yeah, dad. Yeah. So as soon as the shop got stock, because yeah. we thought, because this happened a couple of times, a couple of different venues, and we thought we had a spy. We thought someone was, we was actually going down Portobello Road looking wow. for these geezers that was selling all this mod gear, because we thought we had a spy, but what it was, they had a relation that was the family, and as soon as they knew they were still in the rag trade, so as soon as they bought anything, uh, as soon as they was selling up, they'd go in there. It's, and um, he said to me that they went, the another one we found was uh, Dagnam Heathway, where the Ford plant was. There was one sort of, it was a, wrapped up within the Ford plant. There was a row of shops right, okay. on the on the road, but yeah. it was a, and this army and navy was massive, but it gradually got smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah, yeah. It was all crammed in the corner, and I, my scooter broke down, and I went in there, and uh, oh like oh can I leave my scooter in your yard and I'll, I'll go home and get some tools and they went yeah yeah no problem. And I went, whoa, what's in here? And like, there was all this like sports gear. And it was like, basically, they had like a fashion bit and then they had a this bit and then they had a, like a, a denim bit yeah, like, yeah. and a shop. And, and then it was all crammed into this thing, but it was mostly sports. So there was a load of Wembley balls. We all got Wembley balls. And uh, what, um, yeah, uh, who was I talking about? Uh, what, Marco? Eddie. Eddie. And Eddie said, oh, he goes, that, he goes, that paid my first house. I said, why is that? He said, when we got the word that they were selling up, he goes, we went in there and they had these boxes, like wall of boxes with different sizes in, yeah, yeah. With, all branded with Levi's. Yeah. So it was like size 25, 26, 28, 20, blah, blah, all the different sizes. And he said, what they used to do was, when the new stock come in, they'd put the size 28 in there piled up yeah yeah and then the others had moved to the back so the these tun they were like tunnels going right to the like to the back and he goes when we got them out he goes all it because at the time it was all the japanese yeah, yeah this yeah, is yeah, like yeah, 1990s yeah. yeah so this was by that late and he said all the japanese all the big e stuff and all that they just had it right off yeah because they were paying a pound a pair yeah they went, we have all the Levi's, pound a pound, yeah. have the lot, and as they were clearing them out, they were getting further and further to the back, yeah. and everything, you know, it was getting better and better and better, and they had all the original sort of like cowboy stuff and all that mental going right back to the 50s. Fucking mad okay. stuff. Like. So what about Scooter Boys? When, uh, did they, when did they start coming through on, uh, the, who cares? on the mud scene? <laughs> 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 but that was 84? No, no, I think I think it came I think it came hand in hand. I mean, they were there because they were up north. Yeah. So they used to like slag us off because we had short hair and we needed had a row with a load of northern blokes in um, Victoria once. We was going to the venue and we was in the Wimpy or whatever, and all these squaddies, northern squaddies, come round and like, oh, who fucking we're, we're mods, mate? What are you? What are you? And we went, no, what fucking regiment? Went, no, we're mods. <laughs> you know what I mean? My brother's a mod and he's got he's got long hair and like yeah, yeah, he fucking Norman cut. But we got away with it anyway. But they was threatening us because we had short hair yeah, and they yeah, thought yeah. that's what squaddies were yeah. and mods didn't look like that because yeah. where they come from. Yeah. So I think the thing was it was when we used to go at rallies and all that and like, you know, a couple of the Lambretta national rallies to bright and it kicked off and that, that was a lot of football yeah you know that was like you know it was always a big 
firm of Manx always everywhere you went it was a big like there must have been 10 scooter clubs around yeah. Manchester around the area Stockport and what have you so there was always big mobs of Manx and obviously we didn't get on Man United and they thought they were the dogs and they weren't and also they looked at us like pussies so they looked at us like we were all airy fairy yeah, yeah. you know mods because we was smart and all that but obviously we, uh, it, it, when we was you know when we had that mods thing it was you'd have West Ham Millwall Chelsea Arsenal not so much Tottenham no one likes him but you know what I mean it was a London it was a London mob yeah but at a scooter rally yeah so when the Northerners come up against us don't matter if there was 200 of them 30 of us just going like I mean you know there's gas going off yeah, and all, yeah. thunder flashes and all everything yeah. that was at football in the early 80s yeah, yeah. was at mud rallies and yeah, it yeah. surprised it surprised them to say the least yeah, yeah. you know what I mean and it's that's that story in your pub Mick wasn't it yeah. that was a pub we blew up because we had a mob, a mob of skinheads in the other bar yeah. and we dropped thunder flashes in the uh, pool at the holes of the pool table went round there because they were mobbing up to do like yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you could come here. We're a lo- load of East London mods, want to have it. And we were actually there already, <laughs> but yeah. only a few of us. So we just blew them up. <laughs> Literally blew the fuck out of skin and cut the walls through. We were not going on no trouble. And one side of his face completely black, yeah. and the other side was white, where he'd put his hand. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, and the Scooter Boy thing was, I think that you've got to look at that. So once again, we look at 81. By 81, the Northern Soul thing was big. So, definitely come 82. I'd say 82, yeah. you started seeing people coming to clubs yeah. in Army Greens. Yeah, yeah. Which was a Northern thing, yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? But Northern Soul. So, once again, you've got another... So, you've already had mod turn, like, groups of mods becoming psychedelic for a bit. Yeah, yeah. So, you had another change in fashion. Yeah. And then you had... So this is like, you know, from Parker Boys to actual mods to yeah. R&B loving soul, you know, Rhythm and Soul was Rhythm and Soul Society, we were called at one point. And and then the Northern Soul thing, 18 months. What? And, and, and it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's yeah. like, even if you say two years, all right, let's push it to two years. That's a lot of fashion in two years. Yeah, yeah. From mass like culture to, to undergo all those different changes yeah. but every time it don't, every time that cycle happened you like people would drop off yeah so you'd have less and less and less yeah. and less and less yeah. so like if the scooter boy thing when the scooter boy thing happened some of them started carried on yeah, being yeah. scooter boys and just obsessing over you know fresco pipes and yeah. fucking cut downs and things like that you yeah, know what yeah. i mean so you know they, and they kept with that and so every time it changed and it's like all revolutions you yeah, know yeah. it's just constant like that it's changing and every time you lose you lose a bit of a, a bit of fat yeah do you know yeah, what i mean yeah. so come 83 or eight, yeah i reckon 83 what was left of the mod scene was fucking cool yeah one it was all over the london so it was everyone we know a few south london East London, North London, you know, it's people from Essex, people from Chesham, all over the place, yeah. who want, still wanted to listen to mod music, yeah, yeah. when the whole world, and every scooter run we went to, was playing Out on the Floor, and Al Wilson's A Snake, yeah, yeah. and we didn't want to hear that, yeah, yeah. we wanted to hear mod music, yeah. you know what I mean, so that's, we started up, like, Crawdaddy and Sneakers, Sneakers in Shepherd's Bush was sort of West London and we had Crawdaddy in East and South London yeah. and it was back to roots and it was yeah. back to playing R&B, back yeah, yeah. to playing the stuff we originally heard down the Marquee, the Under Club, yeah. Six T's, yeah, yeah. that early R&B yeah. or like early soul, yeah, you yeah. say, like rhythm and soul. So we went back to that and then, you know, Ed and Terry started a record label and we had it, everything was there on the plate for us. Yeah. And then we started getting pressed by about 84. Started yeah. getting, it became cool again. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it was yeah. like, you know, with Fast Eddie, The Untouchables, Making Time. All yeah. those bands could have made it. Yeah. You know, The Untouchables did, but... Yeah. They, they, Never they, really took off, did Well, they? the thing was, the, <laughs> look, the uh, curse of mod is there was a, the second week they were due to be on top of the Pops, 
or the second time. So you do top the pops when you went in the charts, then you'd get you you wouldn't be able to do it the next week. But if yeah. your record climbed the following week, yeah, you could be on top of the pops again. So yeah. two hits on top of the pops, and we've part of stiff record. Yeah. So Ed found them, and then we give them to stiff records to, yeah, yeah. to sign because they were obviously going to be too big for us. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was like they come. We was they was going to be they was definitely booked to go on it because the record went up like yeah, ten, yeah. another ten places. Yeah. So it went in at like in top forty, then it went to twenty nine, and then the following week it went to nineteen or eighteen or nineteen. So it was definitely definitely going to get on top of the pops. Yeah. Fucking strike, strike by the cameraman. Yeah. And they didn't have a top of the pops that week. You know, there's there's probably ten times yeah. in the history of top of the pops there was no top of the pops on the Thursday. Yeah. And that was one of them. And that's why it failed. Right, one last question. When did the uh, the term casuals first get mentioned or used? Well, I just think that that was, well, the casuals, as I said, the casuals were the, the geezers in the dub and right. reggae really early on. Yeah. Plus 78. Yeah. Like, they were casuals. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, you know, I remember my mum ironing my shirt and my mate sitting there waiting. Yeah. And my mum was ironing me a shirt and uh, we were going, I'm probably going football, but. We were going somewhere and she went, Oh, why can't you dress more casual like your mates? And like they were thought it was the most funniest thing ever. Like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Because, like, like, you know, they had sort of beaches, like stuff you didn't have to iron. Yeah, yeah. Like Lonsdale on or whatever, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So that was our early on, that, that was the casual thing. Yeah. And it was separate from Soul Boys. Soul Boys was a different look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But the early casuals, that sort of Gabichi, you know, Gregory Isaacs yeah. type of look, Bob Marley. That was the look they were going for. And it kept, kept on for nearly six months. Thank you, Bob. Cheers, mate. Thank you.